So I don't know if you got to want to bury the league, but Nina Turner went off the rails the other day on Twitter calling anybody who criticized her a white, uh, an anti-black racist. And let's just remember what she used to say about me. Uh, and your, my husband, Jimmy Dore, will be interviewing you soon. <laughs> oh, and I oh, miss Jimmy Dore. <laughs> now I'm meeting the woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, brains yeah. behind the operation. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Okay, exactly. now I know where all that power comes from. Are you oh. kidding? I love that man, and I hear you do, too. I do. So I am thrilled. <laughs> All right, I know I'm going to see you in a minute. Jimmy Dore says stuff that I can't say, I okay? Know. I know. So, uh, he might all- what, what do I say that you can't say and why can't you say it? I say the truth about politics that she can't say or she would lose her space inside the establishment politic machine. That's what that means. And that's okay. Okay. Is it wild? The more it's power that they get, the less power they have. The more power How they get, the less power. Here we go. Okay, so, I, okay. Know. I know. So yeah, he might alter ego. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank okay. you. So I'm her alter ego. I say things she can't say. She loves me. Uh, and then she said this in June. She said, make demanding better from a Democrat from Democrats makes you a good Democrat. Oh. Demanding better from Democrats makes you a good Democrat. <laughs> and she said that June 26th, that's what it looks like to me. And I say that's a good point, Nina. Thank you. Not a lot of Democrats say that kind of stuff. So it's refreshing to hear that Turner, that Nina Turner, she's all right. Yeah, alter ego. But then <laughs> if you look at this video... When we actually did that, when we actually demanded more from Democrats and we asked them to have a to force a vote for Medicare for all in the middle of a deadly pandemic on the floor of the House when they had the leverage to do it and they didn't and they made bullshit excuses and they haven't done anything. They haven't used the squad has the ability to, to force votes and they haven't done it once. They haven't done it for the minimum wage. They haven't done it for student. Don't, they haven't done it for Medicare for all. They haven't done it for marijuana. They haven't done it for anything. They're not using their power. And so we decided to pressure them to use their power, and they didn't, and they lied. And then she gaslit us and lied and protected politicians. Do you want to see it? Here she is protecting politicians and shitting on activists. It's okay to be disappointed, but the, the squad is, the, is, is, is ultimately the best that we have in terms of being able to push an agenda. And what that means is... <laughs> and what that means is we're not going to get an agenda. <laughs> That's what that means. Because they're not pushing anything. They're rolling over for the establishment at nuclear speeds. It means I hope you don't eat insulin, cheap. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. That you might not always agree with the methods. I need people to understand that when you are on the inside, it doesn't mean that you are selling out. I, I know they, they've gotten a lot of pressure, but they are the ones up there holding it down. They- holding what down? I've seen a million people besides me ask that question. What is the squad holding down? They're not holding down anything. They're rolling over at warp speed for Israel, the establishment, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer and Wall Street and the military industrial complex. They're rolling over. That's what they did. They didn't do anything. They're not holding shit down. Well, Jimmy, uh, also, it's not that I'm disappointed. It's just that I'm going into shock from not having insulin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. They're, they're pushing as hard as they can. And just because things are not going exactly the way, just because they're not <laughs> using a... Hey. Just because things aren't going exactly the way you hoped, or in this case, or in this case, literally the opposite direction... Even still then, that's no reason to put she's she's saying don't put pressure on Democrats. That's what this whole speech is. Stop pressuring politicians to do what they said they would do. That's what this is all about. Telling and gaslighting people at the same time and lying. The exact tactics that some in the activist community want them to use, that doesn't mean that you throw them away. Because guess what? If you're throwing away members of the squad who are our best opportunity to get what we need, and also some members of that progressive caucus, then you're not going to have anybody there. So if the prerequisite in summation, if the prerequisite for relationship means that I have to do or the squad has to do everything you say, the way you say do it, then there's not much of a relationship 
at all. And 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 that is, you're gonna be disappointed. Hell, they're gonna be disappointed with me. <laughs> I, I said that to Tim Black. <laughs> Believe me, we're already disappointed. We've been disappointed in you for quite a while. And certainly after since you said this, I know the Amish guy doesn't understand what you're saying, but we all know what you're doing right now. You are protecting establishment politicians against activists for health care, and you're lying to do it. You're pretending they have a strategy. There's no strategy. You're pretending that we're being p- picky. We're not being picky. We're making demands and holding politicians accountable for the stuff they ran on, and they're not even doing that so this is when nina turner this was her mask off moment that she's a phony who's going to protect politicians over activists and that's who she is um so and you're saying that uh young abner stoltzfus here didn't he didn't pick up on it <laughs> okay so un- unapollic said some don't want to hear it, but Nina Turner will go to Congress and turn into a regular incrementalism loving status quo defending Democrat. It's absurd to spend more time browbeating people with no health care, which is what she was doing, than criticizing politicians who ran on Medicare for all but oppose a floor vote. Here she is again. And then she had the balls to after she said that, after all that gaslighting bullshit she said about force the vote. She then says, what if progressives leverage their vote in exchange for executive action on student debt? She literally said that. Well, I guess they'd be run out of the fucking party, huh, Nina? (laughs) This is great. This is from the People's Party. Two weeks before Pelosi's House Speaker election, we personally asked you to support Force the Vote. Nina Turner said that she privately supported it, but that out of deference to the squad, she was not going to publicly demand a floor vote on Medicare for all. Wow. Privately, the bravest way to support something. (laughs) Privately. (laughs) It's like she's going deep undercover to support this thing from the inside. (laughs) So now here's but here's how she reacts to me. So she she tweets out. She remember she said, I say things she can't say. I'm her alter ego. So she makes this statement. She goes, the GOP sure doesn't want Congressman Turner in Washington. No, Nina. The people who don't want you in Washington is the Congressional Progressive Caucus <laughs> because they they endorsed her corporate opponent, the Progressive Caucus. That's AOC. Oh, whoa. She she endorsed her five minutes before the election. So that's Rashid Tlaib. That's Ayanna Presley. That's uh, Ilhan Omar. That's everybody in the Progressive Caucus. That's Ro Khanna. That's everybody. They endorsed your corporate opponent. That's who doesn't want you in Congress. <laughs> they don't want you in Congress more than the Republicans. Believe me, Democrats hate progressives more than they hate Republicans. And <laughs> you know that they literally threw her away for not doing what the voters they wanted. they literally they literally threw Nina Turner away for doing what the vote. So here, by the way, so here she so I tell her that. So I say the thing that she can't say. So I'm doing what she says. And what was my thank you? She blocks me. She blocked me for putting pressure on Democrats. Translation. I will still be loyal to the crooks in the Democratic Party no matter what they do to me. Please give me a chance. GOP bad. OK, that's black in the empire said that. And as George Carlin said, everybody appreciates your honesty until you're honest with them. Then you're an asshole. Well, don't you think that Nina should be given the same chance that Cenk Uger got to reform his ways? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then this is so this all leads to this. this <clears throat> she did this on Thursday, whenever day this is the 8th. She tweeted out, my prediction of the fallout of the FBI raiding Mar-a-Lago is that we're probably going to see a bunch of MAGA Republicans call to abolish the FBI. So I then said, when people come around to your point of view, like in this case, the FBI is a corrupt, evil organization, then you should welcome them, not continue to insult them, flip them off. You call out their hypocrisy when they're in the wrong, not when they've changed and are correct. So this reminds me of when someone said on Twitter, hey, what do we do when Trumpers want to join our union? What you do is you declare victory. (laughs) And that's what she should have been doing. Hey, nice that you finally come around to our point of view. Welcome aboard. Let's pass the Breathe Act. Why don't you bring it up for a vote? 
like how I said to Anna Kasparian when she got sick of Democrats. I said, welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tweeted this out. I retweeted it, and I said, when lefties cheer on the FBI, you know they're serious about being a Democrat. Now, why do I why do I say that? Because I know she's serious about being a Democrat because she lied about health care activists and protected Democrats. And she'll never criticize them, even after they endorsed her corporate opponent, the, the progressives. And still, she won't criticize. She wants she heard her futures in the Democratic Party and she knows it. So I'm going to give her a hard time for it because she's a politician. So let's remember, she said, demanding better from Democrats makes you a good Democrat. Uh, so I, when I tweeted this out, I'd, I'd, I'd expected people to disagree with me, but I expected the disagreements to come like this. Like this guy says, she is not chairing the FBI. She's predicting correctly the MAGA response. All right, that's a fair, that's a fair retort to my tweet. That's what I expected her to do. And this guy says, fair enough, but why aren't people on the left saying that? That's exactly my point. Nina Turner's not calling for the defunding of the FBI because she's a cop. She sits on a cop board. And she, she doesn't agree with that, defunding the FBI. So she tries to use the politics of division once again. Instead of joining someone who's come around to your point of view. So that's the kind of, that's what I thought. That's the kind of pushback I thought I would get on that tweet, which is a legitimate pushback. And then that's also legitimate. Then why aren't lefties saying it? She then calls me racist. <laughs> she then called, I'm not making this up. She says, when Jimmy Dore knocks a black progressive woman for pointing out conservatives' hypocrisy when it comes to the FBI, you know he's serious about being anti-black. The anti-black part comes from. And pro she doesn't have an argument, Kurt, so that's what her flex is. You know how, how when, uh, when Hillary Clinton says Bernie Sanders is a sexist? That's what this is. They don't have an argument. She doesn't have an argument. And so this is what she does. And this broke a lot of people's hearts, not mine. I knew she was revealing and outing herself because she did. And she even went on and said, so now, and watch how she contradicts herself. So then she says, conservatives were okay with the FBI when it came to the Panthers, MLK and Malcolm X. Now they have a problem with it. Yeah. So now it affected them. So now they get it. So now you could say, see what we've been saying all along? That's not what she's doing. She doesn't want to work with them ever to do anything because she only cares about her spot in politics, which means inside the Democratic Party. So she has to look like a loyal Democrat and always flip the bird to half the country, even if they agree with you. That's what she's doing. What was that group called? The Uhuru what movement? Yeah, she did. where's her tweets about the Uhuru? I, I've never heard of it until you brought it up on the show. I would have never heard about them. The black socialist group that got raided by the FBI because yeah, they said it, they were in bed with the Russians. Now, because of the Trump thing, it's actually good the FBI did so people could see what the FBI does to people that you might not care about. That's like right. the Uhuru social. I wouldn't that, have known about them. Yes, but uh, Nina Turner doesn't care about them. If you have a problem with me pointing that out, you're doing the bidding of these conservatives, which Jimmy is. I don't have a problem with you pointing that out, knucklehead, and you know that. I have a problem with you flipping off half the country when they come around to your point of view. That's called unproductive, and now I know why you're such a failed politician. She went on, she goes, let me be, she won't stop. She goes, let me be clear, Jimmy Dore repackages anti-blackness. So this is the part that loses her total credibility. Not with me. She already lost it with me over forced to vote. She's losing it with every black person. Let me be clear. Jimmy Dore repackages anti-blackness and right-wing talking points and sells it in a way that some lefties are willing to buy. <laughs> that's like when the FBI put up the Martin Luther King quote. <laughs> that's, what they, that's what the FBI, the people who spied on him were like, it was the words of Martin Luther King that we heard through a high powered microphone in a van. So he says, she says he has used right wing talking points against me multiple times and even defended Rittenhouse. Whoa. Uh, he makes millions. And he makes millions doing it. Just for the record, I make less money than AOC. <laughs> Just for the record. Uh, but there you go. 
you made more than Rittenhouse's own lawyers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So I'm going to go to the Fred Hampton leftist, now rebranded as the Revolutionary Black Network. Blackout. Blackout. Is that what's it called? I think it's Revolutionary Blackout. Revolutionary Blackout. Okay, Revolutionary Blackout Network, right? Yes. Uh, and so here's what they had to say about it. I'm pretty sure that these are black guys. Here we go. And, and I'm going to show you this tweet. Maybe I, 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 uh, maybe I can pull it up if you don't have it. Where Nina says that Jimmy, she, and then that when she go to the character assassination that we talked about, where she said Jimmy, he all he used always used right wing talking points and anti black talking points to attack me. Okay, you guys know I can do it both ways. We do this all the time on the show. We can do it either way. Let's say you <laughs> let's say you disagree with Jimmy's take on this. What about this take is attacking Nina from the right? If anything, this is him saying, "Yo, we should be cheering for the abolition of the FBI." That's true. How does a right wing take? How does a how does a racist take? Like maybe one thing she used if he said, "Oh my God, look at angry Nina Turner using the angry black woman trope." Like imagine if he, if he like pulled a racist trope out of nowhere, then I would get it. I was still thinking, I'm like, all right, I get what you guys say. It, it was literally nothing said here that would make you bring up race, other than the fact that you already had this in the cup. Like you already had this in the whole. You had story. this, yeah. You had this way ready to go. So they, she had this, I, I can't wait to call Jimmy Dore a racist because that's all I got against him. And I hate that he's calling me out because I'm the only one calling her out and she couldn't wait. And that's exactly what they said. Like she had this already in the chamber waiting to just throw this at me. I thought, Which, I thought it was like on her list of amends to get back in the squad. Yeah, <laughs> yes. You to get to back call in. Jimmy a okay, check. Check, call Jimmy a racist. <laughs> Correct. So there, so there's a. Uh, there's two black guys. Here's a here's a uh, black woman, Sabby Sabs, friend of the show. And here's how it affected her. What the stuff that Nina Turner did, the low skeezy shit she did. Here's how it affected her. Nina Turner responded to Jimmy Dore's tweet here, and she said, "When Jimmy Dore knocks a black progressive woman for pointing out conservatives' hypocrisy when it comes to the FBI, you know he's serious about being anti-black." and protecting conservatives. And now I feel it again. This is the part I think that makes me feel sad. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's not even the part about protecting conservatives. It's the part about being anti-black. It was very clear to me that this is something that Nina Turner has been feeling for probably a while and it came out kind of like word vomit in this response to Jimmy Dore. Here's the problem. If you look at Jimmy Dore's tweet, when leftists cheer on the FBI, you know they're serious about being a Democrat. If you go back and you look at Nina Turner's original tweet when she says her prediction is what, these are what MAGA Republicans are going to do. There's nothing in either one of those tweets that has anything to do with race. So it made me sad. It made me sad to see that Nina had to throw in the anti-black part whether that's how she feels about him or not, I had to ask myself, does it fit the current situation at hand? No, it didn't. That's the problem. I don't think it was fair to throw that in with this particular situation, because again, this has nothing to do with race. And this is not me saying that Nina Turner shouldn't express what it's like to be a black person, a black woman, et cetera. I talk about that often on the show. I don't think I'm saying that she shouldn't talk about that. But you have to ask yourself about the context is it relevant in this particular discussion? No, it's not. I've had criticism of Nina Turner. I don't agree with her on everything. I don't agree with Jimmy Dore on everything. But I never thought I would see her stoop to that level. Boom. I really never thought that. I felt like that was low, and I felt like that was dirty. Now, now she goes on. I just feel like there were so many other things she could have said if she wanted to prove her point. Like, I felt like I felt like that was a low blow. Like I said, even if that's the way that she feels about him, I don't understand what that had to do with the discussion at hand. And then it kind of made people, you know, some people look at me some kind of way, which is when I start getting those DMs. You're a black woman. What do you think about this? So now I hope that everybody who sees this doesn't assume that this is how all of us feel, because this is not how I feel. I've never met in person. I've never met Nina Turner or Jimmy Dore, but. I do know Jimmy Dore. He's been on this show. I've been on his on his show. I have had conversations with him. 
I only saw Nina Turner once on a stream. It was at Jen Perlman's birthday thingy. I didn't know Nina Turner was even coming to that. She came on for a little bit. I didn't really get a chance to talk to her. I don't really know her like that. But I can tell you that what I have seen, what I know from Jimmy Dore, I don't think Jimmy Dore is anti-black. I don't think Jimmy Dore is racist. And I really don't like when people do that. I don't like it. I know that they've had disagreements before, but I felt like that was such a low blow. Just say you did not have to go there. And it just keeps getting worse. It just keeps getting worse. Why? Because she wouldn't stop tweeting about me. Why? Because calling her a Democrat is a big insult. Because she wants to play both sides. Nina wants you to think she's a progressive fighter of the establishment. And she also rolls over for the establishment and uh, hates half the country, just like the establishment wants her to. And she'll also call anybody a racist who challenges her, like a like a low blow, like she said. And so then uh, I, I was talking about this on Convo Couch, and so Sabrina brings this up. And Convo Couch makes the point that Nina Turner's in a party with the biggest racist in the world as the head of it, Joe Biden, who's done more things to hurt black people than Donald Trump, that's for sure. Let's watch. Realize who her president is, what administration she worked for. And he says, you're running a cover for one of the most anti-black administrations in recent history. You're excusing the political weaponization of a domestic terror organization, the FBI, with a history of anti-black activity that includes kidnapping, rape, torture, and murder. But sure, blame Jimmy Dore. And, uh, I mean, I mean, amazing tweet out there too as well. I mean, Joe Biden, you know, who wrote the crime bill. <laughs> if you want to come over there and say, because Jimmy says that you're being critical of the FBI, that he's anti-black. I mean, is, is not this administration one of the most anti-black administrations that we've ever known? Let's talk about that for just a second. If we want to talk about anti-blackness, now get to these other responses in a second. We want to talk about anti-blackness. I want to think about when she mentions, you know, the left versus right. I've mentioned this before that when it comes to the Democratic Party, they've also been anti-black and they've done it through legislation, which is even worse. Joe Biden's crime bills targeted who? Predominantly black people. I have noticed this pattern of liberals in the Democratic Party who will continue to try to pretend like they're not racist, pretend like they're not anti-black, but then they participate in the same systemic issues that perpetuate that same anti-blackness. They, part they uh, participate in redlining. They participate in gentrification. They participate in housing segregation, even in these blue, these deep blue areas. I live in Massachusetts, I've seen it firsthand. They, part they participate with school segregation. Even though it's not segregated by law, they have other things that they do to keep black kids out of those schools. Those are the liberals here. Those are not the conservatives. So it just seemed like to me, and I'm saying this because she goes on about more right wing talking points. It seemed like to me that if you're going to call out one side for doing that, make sure you also call out the liberals who have actually been just as guilty as being anti-black because they have implemented legislation. They have implemented laws that has done nothing but destroy the black community and keep the black communities down. Let's make sure you add that in there too. Because she goes on to say, let me be clear. Jimmy Dore repackages anti-blackness and right-wing talking points and sells it in a way that some leftists are willing to buy. He has used right-wing talking points against me multiple times and even defended Rittenhouse. He's making millions <sighs> doing it. So here's the question that I have, Nina. So if somebody criticizes you, if somebody criticizes the Democratic Party, if they criticize the way that you ran your campaign, which many of us have, does that mean that we're automatically using right-wing talking points? Does that mean that we're automatically anti-black? You're not allowed to receive any criticism from the left? No, I call bullshit. Bullshit. That's not okay. Why is it a right-wing talking point? Because someone is criticizing you. Because that's her flex. Because she doesn't have a lot of character. And she'll throw that around willy nilly. So when there is actual case of actual racism, people will tend less to believe it now, because just like when people make false hashtag me Too allegations like Anna Kasparian did. Now people believe less. Right. And she ruined her reputation. And now Nina Turner is ruining her reputation doing this to me. She's not ruining her reputation with me. She's ruining her reputation with black lefties. Because she is a goddamn Democrat. To the bone. What's her Democrat reputation now? Is it going up a little her bit? De her Democrat reputation. Yeah. Nina Turner's Democrat reputation has gone through the sky because she's attacking someone to the left of the Democratic Party and to the left of her. That's how I was for forced to vote. But Jimmy, in fairness, a, a, a pandemic is no time to be talking about health care. In fairness. 
<laughs> so let's get back to Savvy. Here we go. I just feel like this just sets a dangerous precedent. It makes it seem like, you know, going forward, are people going to feel like they can't criticize Nina Turner now or she's going to call them anti-black too? Yes. Yes. What do we do? What do we do here? Okay. She says he even defended Rittenhouse. What does that have to do with, first of all, I wouldn't necessarily say he defended. I, I saw that video and it looked like to me it was a lot of video footage that, um, oh, what's his name? Or that Orf uh, made. I was pointing out where the mainstream media lied to you about Kyle Rittenhouse. Most people thought he shot three black people. He shot three white people. That's a Rittenhouse talking point. That's a Rittenhouse. Sorry, that's a Rittenhouse. <laughs> that's a Rittenhouse talking point. I'm sorry. So here we go. Back to this. Which were a lot of things I actually didn't know about until I watched that video. But I wouldn't necessarily say he defended him per se. But what? what? It just seems like to me there is this mentality that even if someone on the other side, on the right may be correct if you're on the left you're not supposed to admit that don't be so i guess i would say just don't be so fixated on your hatred for people on the right to the point where you can't even admit when they're right on a particular issue this is the problem with the two-party system people are so brainwashed to back their party that even when their party is wrong they will defend it even when the other side may be correct on an issue they will still smear them just because they're on the other side. That's what Nina did. That's now, this goes back to the point that Jimmy made in that video about conservatives, some of them waking up to this idea of the FBI, of the problems with the FBI. Jimmy Dore said, well, don't crap on them. You should start to welcome them over. I just feel like, again, like, if, they're, if, if somebody tells me they're against the FBI, if they tell me, you know, we need to get rid of this whole system, I don't really care if they're on the left or the right. If they're down with it and I'm down with it, then let's get the shit done. This is the problem. This is why I hate this two-party system. I hate it. I absolutely despise it. Everything is about left versus right. People are so blinded. They can't even look at just particular issues anymore. Now, it goes on from here. She, keeps she goes going. on to say, if you take right-wing money while running against progressives, you're a conservative. If you use right-wing talking points against progressives, you're a conservative. When did Jimmy Dore run against the progressives? I'm confused. So what this is, and I'll tell you what this is. This is a Democrat talking point that they came up with already. Silence point. To silence me. Yeah, it's a silencing point. Yes, this is a silencing point from the Democratic Party, and she showed her hand too quickly. They weren't supposed to do this until I ran. So what they're going to do if I run, they're going to if I take money from people who are they say are on the right side of the aisle. So if I take money, because my whole thing is I'm going to bring the left and the right together to fight the establishment. So if I take money from people they say are right wingers, that's what they're going to say. They're going to say, if you take right wing money while running against progressives, you're a conservative. So they're going to call me a conservative, even though I'm not. I'm to the left of Nina Turner and the Democrats. So that's what this is. And she blew it. So now we know what their attack is going to be against me if I run for president. They're going to call that one of them is going to be they're going to say I'm taking right wing money and to run against progressives. Uh, Joe Biden is not a progressive. Uh, neither is Donald Trump. That's who I'd be running against. Uh, Joe Biden is a, is more right wing than Donald Trump. Uh, so and then. And, 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 and then down here, if you use right wing talking points against progressives, you're a conservative. What are those right wing talking points? Nina always keeps those a secret. She doesn't mind saying I'm a racist, but she will keep this a secret. And Sabby Sabs calls her out. When did Jimmy Dore run against a progressive? If you use right wing talking points against progressives, you're a conservative. What are the right wing talking points? <laughs> See, this is the thing. Like, what? This is vague. Give me some examples. You got to give me more than this. No, she's what not. What are the right wing talking points that you're Why referring is she to? I didn't see any examples now. mentioned. Oh, Sabrina's right wing. It goes on. She's conservative now. <laughs> if someone on the left is telling you that Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert are potential allies to the left, you're witnessing a grifter that is doing nothing but putting marginalized communities in danger. We don't build build coalitions with right wing authoritarians. Now, she's also uh, referencing there Brianna Toy, uh, Joy Gray, who was Bernie Sanders press secretary the last time he ran. And now she's a host on the Hill uh, because she tweeted out that stuff that we should uh, even if Marjorie Taylor Greene isn't sincere, we should still use her to try to get something done. We should try to use this moment. So she's saying that that Brianna that she's 
ripping Bernie Sanders press secretary, uh, who's to the left of her. She says, if someone on the left is telling you that Marjorie Taylor Greene is a, or Lauren Boebert are potential allies to the left, you're witnessing a grifter. No, what we're to, we're risking someone who understands politics. So in politics, it, that's how you make the sausage, right? And so often you have to do with, deal with people who are opposed to you ideologically, but you agree on one thing for a short period of time, get it done. And so she can't help. That's all she knows now is Democrat politics, which is the politics of hating half the country and not working together ever to get anything done ever. That's all she knows. And Sabby is be befuddled. Well, we can't run this prison with all the races mixing and talking to the wrong people. You got to <laughs> stay on your side. That's right. You don't decide if you're left, right, or racist. We'll, we'll tell we'll, you. We'll tell you who you can talk to. I have a mark here. And if yeah. you say a thing, then that means you're conservative, even though you're not. Right. You, it's not like... You know, it's not like this is gate. This is called gatekeeping, Kurt. Yeah, what, that's what this is called. This is gatekeeping. I'll tell you who you're allowed to talk to. I'll tell you who you're allowed yeah. to work with. I'll tell you how we get these things done. There's, and if you don't get them done the way I say, we are not going to get them done. There's two parties. OK, that's, that's it. how it is. If you there's want two. choices, go and pick yourself a gender out of the bin. That's all you get to pick. That's right. P politics will tell you who you are. Here, there's more. OK, well, to that, I ask. What about black people that are conservatives? <clears throat> what about black people on the right? It, see the Joe Biden told you, you ain't black. You ain't black. <laughs> so what about what about when Bernie Sanders works with guys like Mike Lee? Could there be more right wing guys than Mike Lee to stop the genocide in Yemen? Should he not do that? According to Nina Turner, you shouldn't. And that makes you a bad person. So Bernie's a bad person for working with Mike Lee because she sees Mike Lee as a right wing authoritarian or whatever she says. You know, familiar with the theory of relativity, you relative to wherever Nina is standing. Mm -hmm. That is what side you are on. That is right. <laughs> There's no fixed principle of any kind. Here we go. Back to Savvy. This is the problem with the left-right divide, putting marginalized communities in danger. What about the marginalized communities that are on the right? This is making the assumption that everybody that's black is on the left. They're not. And black people are leaving the Democratic Party, not joining it. That's right. And Nina Turner's helping I that. can't. I can't with this. So it makes me really sad. It makes me really sad because at the end of the day, all this back and forth, and we haven't accomplished anything, not one damn thing. So she, she ends with this. What have we accomplished on the left? It's been what, six years? Nothing is getting done, nothing. I'm so pissed, I'm livid, I was just, at a housing project here in Boston. People are having their freaking ceiling separating from the damn wall. More people are still being evicted. Tent communities are growing. <laughs> people still don't have health insurance. People still don't have dental insurance. But what we got right now, what we got here, we got someone who sat up there and ran twice in a row and the Democratic Party screwed her twice in a fucking row. <laughs> and here she is sitting up here, still pointing fingers at the right instead of pointing fingers at your own damn party that has continued to screw you over multiple times. We won nothing. So that's pretty powerful. And she's calling out Nina Turner. Now, I guess Nina Turner is going to call her anti-black. She won't because she knows she can't do that to her. Maybe she'll call her a sexist. Oh, that won't work. She'll still think of something. She'll call her a right wing adjacent or an alt or something. <laughs> Isn't the left adjacent to the right? <laughs> like so back back to the Black Revolutionary Network, and here's what they say. They get one more one more clip from them. Go ahead. Look at this. This and this is another part. Once and this, and this is where I, 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 I this is the only tweet I really respond to out of this whole drama. Because I'm like, this is, what are you doing? This is, you see how she started? This has nothing to do with FBI anymore. <laughs> At that point, right. you see how if so, she says, if someone on the left is telling you that Marjorie Taylor Greene or Lauren Boebert are potential allies to the left, you're witnessing a grifter that is doing nothing but putting marginalized communities. And, and, for one, we never, no one said, no one ever said that. What we said is, how bad does it make AOC and Bernie Sanders look? 
that Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert is calling out NATO, calling out Ukraine spending, and outflanking them on the left on some issues. That's not that's what they mean by right. That's when they call you right. It's when you are saying things that are left that happen to also overlap with some people on the right. They're now labeling that right. That's right. The Red Brown Alliance. Go ahead. Yeah, and this is the period on on that statement, CJ. No one is praising Marjorie Taylor Greene. And this is the thing that drives me crazy. People can say, you guys are praising Marjorie Taylor Greene to to bash ALC. We literally saying that if, if Marjorie Taylor Greene can get the issue of Ukraine correct, it's, she's literally tweeted about doing Assange. AOC never tweeted about him. So we're not saying she's good. We're saying, look at these clowns over here for being lower than her on these issues. <laughs> you, you see how she get that twisted? Yes. Right. The TYT left. Now let's go back to that's the That's the TYT left. He just referred to Nina Turner's tactic as that's the TYT left. How she had to twist that. She had to twist that to make us wrong. And that's what a politician does. And that's what Nina Turner is. She's a politician. She's been a politician for as long as I've known her. She's only been doing politics. And that's who she is. She had to twist it. And they fucking see it. And everybody sees it. And the only people who don't call it out are people who don't want to call it out and don't want to see it because they want to use her. They want to use her. All right. Anyway, here we go. It's now offensive we, to them, Nick. No, they get they get that's what you're doing. It's that's offensive that. to them that's right. that you're saying this person who is of low stature to them is better than them. It's offensive. That's so right. they, they absolutely <laughs> understand point. what you're saying and they're offended by it. And what what Nina Turner is doing by interjecting like people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, this is, speaks to the point I was saying earlier. This is about a larger class divide. So moving on, here's Black in the Empire, and he responds to Nina Turner saying, if you take right-wing money, you're a conservative. If you're right-wing points, talking points, he responds to her, and he says, oh my God, you became one of them after what they did to you. And what did they do to her? They endorsed the progressives in the Democratic Party, the progressive caucus, endorsed her corporate opponent in her face. That's what they did. Then they took millions of dollars in money from Israel and APAC and flooded her district with it to kill her and beat her. And they did. They smashed her by 30 points. She even come close to winning. After what they did to you and after what they did to Bernie, she's still a loyal soldier of the Democratic Party. And that was my mistake. That was my offense that I called her a Democrat. Not that I challenged her on the FBI, but that I called her a Democrat. And the only way she could fight back was to call me a racist (laughs) because she's got nothing to fight back. And now she exposed herself and now she'll never be able to use that again. She just fucked herself forever. Because she did it so publicly. I trended for two days straight because of that. And everybody got to see that she's a bullshitting Democrat. And even how many more black people do I have to show you to call her bullshit out? All you're doing is getting a lot of black people kicked off being black right now. I know. (laughs) And then right underneath here, it says she's completely given over to the dark side and they don't even want her. I think it was she changed. She probably already always was and is trying to clear it up with them. Like, no, I was always cool. I'm not, I wasn't with these people. And if you want to know why I criticize Democrats more than I spend time criticizing Republicans, it's because I've been a Democrat my whole life. And here's why. People are like, why does Jimmy Dore just focus so much on the Democrats? And like when the Republicans are like obviously worse, it's because we're supposed to expect something of them because they're supposed to represent us. That's right. Left as are their constituents and we have nowhere else to go because a third party is basically forbidden in this country. Yes. It's not like we expect anything of the Republicans. How dumb do you have to be to ask that question? Why doesn't Jimmy spend more time ripping on the Republicans? Oh, I don't know. Where else are you going to get those kind of critiques? Where else could you find somebody ripping on the Republicans? How about the problem isn't that we, how about the problem isn't that we have a pro-corporate, pro-war right-wing party in America? The problem is we have two of them. 
We don't have a left-wing party, and the fucking mission of this show is to wake people up to that fact, that there is no Democratic left-wing party, that we have two right-wing, pro-war, anti-worker, pro-Wall Street parties in America. And that's the fucking fact. Democrats aren't even trying to get workers to vote for them anymore. As Chuck Schumer said, for every blue-collar worker they lose in Pennsylvania, they're going to get two white-collar Republicans to vote for them. That's who they are. They're a party of white-collar Republicans. There is no party that represents the left or workers. And that's why I spend all my time focusing on the par party that pretends to represent those people. Republicans. I still hate the neocons. Like, I, I, I didn't stop. So there you go. Slow News Day says to Nita Turner, after she calls me anti-black, she says, you're running cover for one of the most anti-black administrations in recent history. You're excusing the political weaponization of a domestic terror organization like the FBI with a history of anti-black activity that includes kidnapping, rape, and torture, and murder. But sure, blame Jimmy Dore. When are you going to call out the FBI, Nina? When are you going to call for defunding them? So here, by the way, I have to, you can see how this looks awkward. Like it's not, I had to copy and paste that because Nina Turner has blocked me. She blocked me a long time ago. <laughs> so she did a, she tweeted about me for an entire day, negative smears of calling me racist from behind a block. How did she even see your initials? <laughs> who, who knows? From behind a block. She did that. She smeared me and slandered me and, call, and called me a racist with absolutely no basis. She did that from behind a block. Could you be more desperate? Could you be more of a coward? That's what Nina Turner is, a desperate coward who uses identity politics in the most cheapest way that the values actual acts incidents of racism for her own personal gain. And everybody sees it. Is it amazing how much they hate like as far as politically speaking immigrants like they want to build a wall so these people can't these yeah. right wingers can't get over here on the good people's side well she says this he's literally pointing out the hypocrisy of progressives who despite the panthers mlk and malcolm x are now cheering on the fbi because of trump she says and then she says i mean aren't you married to a cop okay that's I, I'll I'll give her that. I won't criticize her for being married to a cop, but I will criticize her. She's on the Cleveland Police Foundation board. Just so you know. You think she's going to call for defunding the fucking cops or defunding the FBI? No. And I like what Max Blumenthal said. If you can't read it, I'll read it for you. He says, good to see Cleveland Police Foundation board member Nina Turner push back on calls to defund the FBI. If she ever wins an election, she'll be able to join the rest of the squad in voting to increase the FBI's budget. Because that's what the squad did. Here's another one. Uh, oh, this is uh, this guy. I watch his videos, right? So this guy's a right winger. Who I told oh, yeah, Sean. Sean. I don't agree with him on anything, but he does make entertaining videos. And I think he's I think he's honest. I think he calls them how he sees them. I think he has a bias, but I don't think he lies, right? That's why he's worth watching, I think. Because it's not talking points. The, and, and the irony me, is the only people who don't use talking points are the ones that they attack and say you're using you're talking, talking points. Right. So he hates me. He, believe me, he's no fan of mine. This guy doesn't like me. And he doesn't like anything I stand for. But he said this. He goes, I do love, I love to do videos on where I disagree with Jimmy Dore. But every time that he's trending, it's because people he's further left than are calling him a secret right winger. It's ridiculous. I disagree with him because he's on the left. He's not remotely conservative. Stop lying. You guys are both in the same boat. I hope you know. Both you and Sean. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I like what Max says about Nina. In her latest failed bid for elected office, Nina Turner completely turned her back on Palestine, denouncing the BDS movement and condemning those who de delegitimize apartheid Israel. That's what she did to try to get elected. She turned her back on Palestinians and got in bed with Israel because she thought it would get her votes. Wait, they got rid of her anyway, though, didn't and they? And they got rid of her any again. The whole the thing that's so funny about Nina Turner is she's trying to become part of a club that hates her. The Democratic Party, even her own progressive caucus endorsed her opponent. They hate you, Nina, but you still want in. Talk about Stockholm, because that's where her money's going to come from. That's the career path for Nina Turner. Otherwise, she ain't got nothing. The fox is more dangerous than the wolf. Indeed, he says. Here's a 
Here's a, here's, this is also interesting about Nina Turner. Pretty sure Malcolm X, because she started tweeting out stuff about Malcolm X to try to say that uh, Malcolm X was talking about me. I'm the fox that tries to get you to go towards the wolf. It didn't make any sense. Oh. But Malcolm X had a famous... I'll tried you. your clever tricks to force us to get yeah. Medicare, didn't you? Yeah. Well, we stopped it. <laughs> so I'll show you the quote in a second. But he says, pretty sure Malcolm X was talking about politicians that posture as radical and in touch with the community while running as Democrats and supporting imperialist mafias like NATO, as Nina Turner did in this call for the strongest economic sanctions. So here she is calling for war with Russia, strongest economics. She's in bed with NATO. And that is who Malcolm X was warning people against, according to Max Blumenthal. He says, pretty sure Malcolm X was talking about politicians that posture as radical and in touch with community while running as Democrats. So she, she says, this person is a Democrat. Democrats are right wing authoritarians. Thanks for coming to my <laughs> TED Talk. Democrats are right-wing authoritarians, Nina, in case you didn't check. There's another one. The right-wing is not acknowledging systemic bias on the part of the FBI, LOL. They are mad at the agency, one after one of their own. Again, missing the point. Who cares? Who cares? They Does see it? it now. They see it now. Does it? So now they see it. Just like you saw it when they went after the uh, Black Panthers and Malcolm X. Now but, they see it. But Trump's an even bigger threat than this massive yeah, I know. domestic terrorist organization, organization <laughs> called the FBI. So Shauna Burley gets them. She says, you know what's the worst characteristic of the Democratic Party? They'll abandon their values without hesitation if they find out their political enemy agrees with them. It's more important to them to vilify their opponents than to man maintain consistent ethic and principles. Even racist prison gangs can get it together to sell heroin on the yard. Right. They can't. Like, that's unreal. That's I. I no, you're good. You're good. And so here here is Brianna Joy Gray, Bernie Sanders press secretary when he ran. She agrees with me and she's black. But I guess she's not. not racist. No more. She's not. not no more. She's not black. <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene is right about the FBI, bad faith or not. In today's radar, I argue that the left should take advantage of the right's new acknowledgement of systemic bias and push to abolish the FBI, an institution that has always protected elite power, not the people. And there it is. And of course, she got attacked by shit libs and people like Nina Turner for this. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, that's it. And then back <laughs> down here, I go, why are you being so anti-black? <laughs> And that did very well. It got like it got like thirteen hundred <laughs> likes. So here, blue check Beth caught this. She says Nina Turner is posting Malcolm X quotes out of context, misrepresenting him. So you can't tell he's literally talking about her and not people like Jimmy. Door is about as liberal. Door is about as liberal a thing as you can do. Oh wait, and not wait again. Let me read it again. Nina Turner posting Malcolm X quotes out of context, misrepresenting him. So you can't tell he's literally talking about her and not people like Jimmy Dore. That's about as liberal a thing as you can do. And so you want to hear it. So this is one of the quotes she was posting. You want to hear it? You tell me who you think Malcolm X is talking about. Nina Turner, the politician or Jimmy Dore. There are many whites who are trying to solve the problem, but you never see them going under the label of liberals. That, that white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. He's like a fox. And a fox is, almost, is always more dangerous in the forest than the wolf. You can see the wolf coming. You know what he's up to. But the fox will fool you. So the wolf is the Republican. The fox is the Democrat. That's the party you're a part of, Nina. That's what Malcolm X was talking about. The fox is the Democrat. Not Jimmy Dore, who's to the left of you and the Democrats, and not the Republicans, who's the right of you. The Republicans are the wolf. The Democrats, the liberals are the fox. That's what Malcolm X said. And you can misquote them all you want, but everybody sees through you. You stepped in it, Nina. You wrecked yourself. 
After they screwed her, she should have been back on here talking about how they screwed her. That's she should, should have been, been back doing. on this show talking about how she should have been back somewhere talking about how they screwed her. She yeah, didn't talk about how they screwed her. This show, any show. She, Just, that's what yeah. I'm saying. She should have been anywhere. I know that. That I know what you meant. She should have been on the Young Turks. She goes on. She's a part of the Young Turks now. She gets a check from another. Anna was angrier. Anna was angrier <laughs> about what happened to her. You're right. Anna was angrier about what happened to Nina Turner than what Nina Turner was angry. You're exactly right. She should have been going around to all the shows and she should have been talking about how the Democrats screwed her. But she didn't. And she talked about how you the, the, the progressive caucus was pressured. So you can't be mad at them for going along with the establishment. That's what Nina Turner did. There's more. Uh, the state of the U.S. left at the moment. The FBI U.S. intelligence apparatus has been tied to the murders of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and Fred Hampton. But since going after Trump, Democrats and leftists now love it. And so any critique of this is now racist and most obviously Jimmy Dore's fault. You've made millions from this. <laughs> millions. <laughs> I like this. And Nina's over at TYT now taking billionaire money from Jeffrey Katzenberg, Hillary Clinton's donor. And this is what the Revolutionary Blackout Network says. TYT supporters calling me a capitalist because I dissed their queen, Nina Turner, while TYT was shutting it down and busting union organizing. Makes him laugh. Here's another one. Nina Turner certainly went scorched earth yesterday and further illuminated that leftists do not belong in the Democratic Party, which is an authoritarian, neoliberal, imperialist corporation that caters to its donors. And that's what Nina Turner has been protecting. That's what she runs interference for, and she smears activists for, and then to the point where now she calls me racist. She got, you think she got consolation donors, or like, we're going to screw you for now, and then <laughs> just... Uh... I, yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure her husband runs the 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 company that runs her campaign. So when she gets campaign money, it goes to her husband. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. So uh, anyway, uh, way to go, Nina. You stepped in it, and this will probably follow you around for the rest of your political career, which will be inside the Democratic Party. We all know that. You're a good Democrat, and you would vote for Nancy Pelosi as speaker in a heartbeat, too, because that's who you are. And we all see it now. And I'm a comedian who smokes pot, and I couldn't give a shit what you think about me. But it's obvious you give a shit what I think because you went on a mental rant for 24 hours on Twitter calling me every name in the book. And now black people are calling you out for it. Congratulations. To a blocked account that she shouldn't even seen whatever you said. That's right. She blocked me so she didn't have to see it. She blocked me so she'd have to see it. And then she spent a whole day talking about me. A whole day tweeting at me from behind a block. You know why? She's that's the kind of courage she has. How is it in a whole day of tweets? There's no specific details on these right wing talking not one, points. Not one specific detail on my right wing talking points. Not top one secret, man. Not one. But how's that, Jeffrey Katzenberg? So I make millions. Your boss, Jenk Uger, took twenty million dollars from right wing donors. He took four million from Buddy Romer. That's who you and the Young Turks are, and everybody knows it. And there's no getting out of it. Hey, maybe I should show you the play the video of Jake Uger yelling at black airline employees down at the airport. Should you want me to do that for you? Uh, when she was talking to Steph in that first video, it sounded like the way her voice sounded like she's probably called like four other people. Oh, he's my alter ego. Yeah. She's probably said that. She there's probably a line she says all the time. Like it sounded so <laughs> phony, politician y to me. You know, but unless you have hindsight, I wouldn't have picked out then. Like, I, I was like, all right, it's a politician thing. But now you're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, so thanks for the segment, Nina. I'm sorry you're such a shitty politician and a bad person who hurts your own cause because you want to get a dunk on a comedian in his fucking garage. But you you did it. And you I think blew bad, it. just kind of like amoral and careerist. And, hey, amoral uh, and the careerist. things that make you a good Democrat. The things that make you a good politician and a good Democrat. Yes. Yeah. Congrats. You're a great Democrat, Nina. Hey, we're coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Detroit, Los Angeles, Spokane, Tacoma, Denver. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all our tickets for all our live shows. See you there. Mm -hmm.